Hey everyone, uh, welcome to my talk, Making Android Apps with Intelligence. And a little bit about me, I'm an Android developer and currently a consultant at Microsoft AI and Research. I'm also a student of Udacity's AI Nano degree. I'm an organizer and women tech makers lead for Google Developer Group Seattle. And in 2015, I taught Android Application Development Certificate Program at University of Washington. So during my talk, if you want to tweet about it, you can use my Twitter handle at MargaretMZ, which I included on every slide going forward. Uh, so, okay, so that's what I just said. Over there. So there's Artificial intelligence everywhere these days, from Google Home to Amazon Alexa, Microsoft Cortana, Pepper the Robot, and self-driving cars. So AI is everywhere. I'd like to share with you a personal story of how AI is impacting my life. In January this year, my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer. On March 6, he went through a surgery at UW Medical Center. The surgery was conducted by an expert surgeon with assistance of a robotic arm. It is so precise with so little intrusion to the body. My dad was discharged within 24 hours of the surgery. And 10 days later, last week, he was sitting in the restaurant celebrating with us for being cancer free. So I am, even to today, I'm still so amazed by how technology is changing our lives. So we also hear a lot about machine learning. Google's TensorFlow, IBM Watson, Uber uh, uses Microsoft Cognitive Services to self, selfie check drivers. We hear a lot about AI and the machine learning interchangeably, these two words, but Machine learning is actually a subset of artificial intelligence. It's a study of algorithms. It's about learning from examples and experience instead of hard-coded programming rules. For example, a very simple example of, say, telling the difference between an apple and orange using supervised learning would be to collect training data, train a model, and then use that model to predict instead of writing if-else uh, rules to tell the difference between an apple and orange. So this example is taken from the Google uh, developers machine learning recipes on YouTube. I include a link here for you to take a look. So the goals that I have today to talk about making Android apps with intelligence is to help you get started with making apps with intelligence and share with you some of the resources uh, available and this is not a crash course on machine learning. As I mentioned earlier, I'm an Android developer. I'm not an expert on machine learning or AI. But in fact, you know, as long as you know how to make a REST API call, you can already make apps with intelligence. Um, and also, even though my title is called Making Apps, Android Apps with Intelligence, the content I'm sharing is applicable for iOS and web as well. So as I said earlier, uh, machine learning is not new, but the exciting news is that recent years, there's a break, we hear a lot about it, but because in recent years, there's a lot of breakthrough uh, in this technology, as well as the news of these services are pretty much available to us app developers, a lot of it for free. And I wanna share with you the resources, the complexity goes from easiest to harder, right? So I want to talk about how, as Android developers, we can just use the Google Play services, Mobile Vision API. Uh, that's one option. Another option is REST API call, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Google, Microsoft, IBM, HP all offer these machine learning services. Then later on, I will talk a little bit more complex example about training some pre-trained models, for example, using the TensorFlow and Microsoft language understanding intelligence system. And I will not, in this talk, I will not talking about 
coming up with your own model, uh, machine learning models. I will leave that to you when you become an expert one day. So the first option is to use the mobile vision API as a part of the Google Play services. So for those of you who are Android developers, it's like really easy to use because it is part of the, the Google Play services since the 7.8 release from August of 2015. And it's very easy to get started. It can detect face, barcode, and text. I've included links for these code labs for you to try out later. So an example on the face detection is that it can detect one or more faces. Here's an example of the picture of my face. And if I feed it another picture, say with a cat, it, it, it can detect just the face, not the cat's face, but the human's face. And I want to talk about the distinction which meant here it is that this API will do face detection, meaning it can detect the face, but it cannot recognize this is person A versus person B. So once your app is detecting that face, you come back again, you will not know that's this particular person. This detection can be done from still image or live video and can be detected from different angles. So you know by comparison with other IPIs, I find this one works out pretty well with different angles. You can also detect uh, what your facial, facial uh, activities, for example, if you're blinking your eyes, you're smiling, and the landmarks on your face, such as your nose, your uh, mouth, where your eyes are located. So here's how to use the face detector, really easy. You just need to include Google Play services, and then you create a detector object. Make sure it's op operational first before you use that object. And then you just uh, detect the faces here. And then once you detect that face, you can draw a rectangle on the face. That's the simplest example, but you can do other things as well. I included the face detection with the Vision API code lab for you to try it out later. Here's an silly example. Uh, the, the source is from Google. They created a sample app called the Googly Eyes, basically the same as what I described earlier, except the, in, the landmark in this case are your eyes. So it can detect whether your eyes are open or blinking. So you can create, uh, you can see how this app is working. The Mobile Vision API can also detect barcode. Um, it can detect multiple barcodes at once, as well as barcode of various formats. And it can also detect texts. Uh, this has been around for a while, so it's nothing new. But the reason why I'm going through this here is how easy it is by using the Google Play Services Mobile Vision API that you can have these capabilities in your Android apps. OK, so now I'm going to move on and talk about using machine learning services via REST API calls. So that using Google Play services is really easy, right? You just put it in your build.gradle. Now let's look at the REST API calls. Well, I'm sure you already know the REST API calls. Typically, when we use these machine learning services, we will send over an image, video, audio, or text, a typical example. And that services in the cloud will provide the servicing in terms of the vision, speech, language, natural language processing, text recognition, and translation, search, et cetera. And then you get back a response, and then you just use that response in your app. Notice because of the API call, you need to have internet connection to, to, to use uh, these services. To get started with these services, a typical example is you know, all these companies are offering these services. They will offer you some free trials for a period of time or number of transactions. After a while, they will start to ask you, like, you need to pay some money. Um, but some services are still free. And the typical process is you get your API key, you include that key in the Android app, and then you will download the SDK uh, or include the dependency your build.gradle. Some companies, for some of those APIs, they do not have SDKs, but you can just make your own REST API calls and send over the image and the text, et cetera, and get back the response and process the response. So I want to talk about in this a few examples of using pre-trained models. So th these so-called REST API calls, there's no training of the machine learning models at all. 
these are pre-trained. You do not need to have any machine learning knowledge. You just need to know how to make a REST API call. And to check out these services, you can typically try out these APIs directly online from their website. And I will, I will take a quick look at the example of the Google Cloud and the Microsoft Cognitive Services. So let's take a look at the Google Cloud Vision API. This is the website. For this one, to try out the API, you can drag and drop an image. So I drag and drop an, an image of a cat, and the API correctly detected it is a cat. It has some other alternatives here as well, but the cat is listed in number one. And this is just online for you to try it out. You can try out their text translation as well. This is for you to try it out before you actually use the API in your app. And I will also show you this one. This is Microsoft's Emotion API. As I mentioned earlier, the Google's Vision API can detect whether there's a face or not. And it can detect where your landmark of the face as well. So Microsoft has actually the vision, the emotion API. Well, both Microsoft and, and the Google's API can detect the multiple faces here, right? And then if I click on this person, you will see that the emotions actually is listed. You can see the anger. Um, I can't quite see very well, but you can li see listed out all these different emotions. So when you are, say, writing your app, you get back this response, JSON response, and you can just choose the emotion that was the highest score to determine what actually the emotion is for that particular face. And then I will not go into details. This is HP's. Again, it's similar. You can go through to look at what API they're offering and how each API actually work before you include that into your app. So I will talk about uh, a little bit about the Microsoft Vision API. The computer vision API and the emotion and the face can actually detect gender, age, emotion as well. And I will show you, this is the code, uh, an example. Um, let's see, I'm trying to get my screen to work here. So this is just a very simple uh, example. So I will take a photo. And I didn't try this before, so I will just try it. I, I don't know what will happen, OK? I did not try this before. It might totally come out to be inaccurate. So what did it say? Indoor, building, table, bench, room. OK, dog. There's no dog. but. There's a man. <laughs> so more or less, it detected the, some of these objects in the room. And notice, so this is a sample app that I wrote. Uh, this, again, this demonstrate you have to call uh, some endpoint, and it get back to JSON, and then it will, I parse the JSON, you, I put these captions there. And notice that this one will rely on the internet connection, because the one time I did a demo, and there was no internet connection, and this did not work. And, and I'll explain to you later on why this is important, because you, know, you don't always have uh, internet connection. OK, so here's an, another example of uh, using the computer and emotion and the speech. This is the Mimicker Alarm app that I worked on. It's kind of cute. So let me see if I can move this over. Um, and I'm going to set an alarm to be 2. And the alarm will ring in uh, less than a minute. Also, actually, uh, in here, I set it to be tongue twister. Um, so OK. 
I'm going to set it to three. So basically, and now the alarm is going off. Basically, I have to do something to dismiss that alarm. There's no way to dismiss this alarm. You can't snooze it. If you try to snooze it, I think it will just try to come back. Oh, um, it, I snoozed it. It will come back. Sorry, let me try again. I should not have snoozed it. So it, the alarm will ring again shortly, less than a minute. And I have to perform an action, action either by finding a color or making an expression or by um, making a tongue twister. So sorry, this is kind of freezing up. That's the problem with live demo. OK, so this is the right screen now. And I'm going to try to dismiss this alarm. And I need to find something that's green. Um, huh. Well, that is too far. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try find this. I have a green umbrella. So this should have dismissed the alarm. Maybe I should have done is to do the, oh, now I'm stuck with this alarm. I cannot, <laughs> that I cannot dismiss. But I can go back and change it to be the tongue twister or, anyways, I'm sorry I could not um, go through this example. I was going to show you whether we can use a tongue twister or emotion making a silly face, but I think I'll just move on from the example now. Okay, so so I talked about the um, doing REST API calls for machine learning. Now I want to move on to talk about actually training the pre-trained model, some of the examples. So some of the examples will include like Google's TensorFlow, although TensorFlow is not limited to just training the pre-trained model. But in my talk, I will only talk about the training the pre-trained model. Uh, Microsoft's la language understanding I've included the Google Cloud machine learning and Amazon's machine learning platform here, although I will not talk about the actual um, coming up with your own models, et cetera. So TensorFlow, you probably, everyone has already heard about TensorFlow, right? Yes? Raise your hand if you have heard about TensorFlow. Really? OK. Um, then I will, put, I will play that video because I was assuming everybody has heard of it. Basically, it's this open source machine learning library uh, released by Google, I believe, end of 2015. And shortly after that, became the most popular repo on GitHub. And it's especially use, useful also for deep learning. If you heard of deep learning, AlphaGo beat the human player. That's using the, the, the deep learning, TensorFlow's deep learning. And it's for both research and production. In recently, in February, they just released their 1.0, uh, 1.0, and then 15 days ago, they released 1.0.1. So since only two of you heard about it, I will play this video. Hopefully, we have internet connection. Uh, let me check my internet connection. It's supposed to be playing. Yeah, it downloads when it doesn't have internet connection. It just starts to download. This is just not working out very well. I'm sorry, I have to move this over to 
to check out this video because I really want to show you this video since only two of you have heard about TensorFlow. All right, so I think I give up on trying to play this video. I will just describe to you what it is. And when I share my slides, you can go look at it. Basically, it's a pretty cool tool that researchers can use as well as developers could use. Um, I will move on to talk about the TensorFlow for Poet uh, collab. How many of you actually have tried out this collab before? No? Okay. So I will not walk through the collab, but I will point you to the collab. It's actually uh, pretty straightforward. And basically, you will go through these steps for the collab. It's not really machine learning per se. You will install and run a TensorFlow Docker image with everything already there. And then you will retrieve the images of different categories of flowers. For example, dandelion, sunflowers, and, and uh, tulips, et cetera. And what you will do is you will actually retrain. They provided a Python script here that's really simple. One of these steps, right, once you retrain, you retrieve the images, you will retrain the final layer of inception, three, with 500 to 4,000 images. And the more images you train, um, you know, the better the accuracy the model actually does on the prediction. And inception is a huge image classification model with millions of parameters that you can differentiate, a large number of kinds of images. So I highly encourage you to go through this collab it's not about Android, it's not about app development, it's just sort of an intro to give you an idea what is supervised learning, learning is, um, supervised machine learning is. And then once you train that model, you, you will use this retrained model to classify an image, like you will feed in an image, and the model will tell you, oh, it's a sunflower, or it's a lily flower, or it's a tulip. So it doesn't take that long to go through this collab, and you can try it out later. And TensorFlow can run on mobile, on Android and iOS. So they also have this, if you click on this link, it will take you to some Android sample apps with TensorFlow. And Google has written these three sample apps of TensorFlow Classify, TensorFlow Detect, and Stylize. Right? And I have also included the recent TensorFlow Dev Summit video. Peter Warden actually talked about the mobile and embedded TensorFlow will give you greater details of how to compile and run the samples, or you can just download the ready-made uh, APK to try it out. So I will show you real quick how, what these three apps uh, are doing. So hopefully this is still linked. So there's a, you can try out the sample app. You can also just download the APK in there. And there's three, three of these. And this Tensor, TensorFlow Classify, this one will classify um, uh, the, uh, the object. So let's see. You can see my screen. As I point to get the keyboard, it, it correctly cl classify as a computer keyboard here. And the difference between this one that I was showing you earlier, the sample uh, using the Microsoft Vision one, that one was using a REST API call. So that one must rely on the network. And you must have internet. And this one, you do not need to have an internet connection. And you can just um, you know, see it classifies this correctly as, as a, a computer keyboard. 
One thing I want to point out, though, is I think their model is not trained on humans. So if I, you know, if there's a lot of humans sitting here, I point this to a human, it will not be able to recognize it's a human. It actually will give some other things. I don't know, stretch. Anyway, it's not recognizing as a human. And then uh, I will skip the TensorFlow detected. You know, this one, it can detect like multiple objects, like human uh, objects or the same kind of object. And then let's take a look at the TensorFlow stylized. Uh, this one. So this one, um, there's actually another collab, not so much of an Android, but actually you will go use the uh, uh, TensorFlow to stylize with some styles. But this one is actually the new TensorFlow sample app included as part of the Android uh, sample app. So for this one, this is the um, preview screen, right, the Android camera preview screen. As I move around, as you can see, the picture I'm trying to take, is it taking on that style of the, this particular one? And I can change it. I believe you can blend the style as well. And then you can just click on save. Um, and then you can save that image. So I will not go into detail about how the TensorFlow style uh, Stylize actually works under the hood, but I'm just showing you how this Android app is working out. And there's all kind of uh, the Dev Summit videos on TensorFlow. You can check it out if you want to learn more about TensorFlow. Uh, now I want to move on to talk about uh, Microsoft Louis. So when I talk about the TensorFlow, I did not drill down deep about exactly how the TensorFlow work, et cetera. I basically talk about some pre-trained model. You train the last layer to recognize images um, or some sample app on Android. And this one, when I'm talking about the language understanding intelligent service, it's actually a, a user interface, web user interface. And, and then you will train a pre-built language understanding model. Again, you don't start out from the beginning. It's already trained. Um, and then you will deploy the model to a HTTP endpoint to interpret human language. Then you use that HTTP endpoint in your app, just like I talked about earlier about REST API call. Um, so let me see if I can log in. If I can log in, I will do a demo. If I cannot, I will just describe to you what is going on. So let's see. I, I try to get all of these uh, all working ahead of time, but somehow it just got logged out. OK, so I'm actually logged in. Um, I think this is the weather app. So I don't want to talk about it from the beginning, but you can, as you can see, it's basically a web interface here. And I will just describe to you in my slide what can happen to that web interface. Is for example, you can create one called weather app, uh, and then you can add like two pre-built entities, like geography and date time, and then you will add an intent. In this case, the intent is kind of like the action you want to perform. Uh, in this case, it's to get the weather, but you can imagine sometimes you can be get flight or get news, and then you will just type you will actually type through that web interface, what is the weather like in Seattle today? Or what is the weather like in San Jose today? Um, when you're typing that sentence, you're actually training that machine learning model, but you're training it through a web interface. And you can create two parameters, like where and when. And then you will train it with a couple more sentences, like what is the weather in San Francisco? What is the weather in New York tomorrow? And you try to give a bunch of examples that can turn in the geography of the location as well as the date time. And you just give it a whole bunch of examples. And then at that point, you will publish the HTTP endpoint. When you publish the HTTP endpoint, the web interface actually will give you the JSON that will return, that you will see the where and the when parameter that you can use in your Android or iOS app. 
And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, you use the SDK, and optionally, you combine with speech to text with the language understanding. So you can imagine you can create an app, and it, it doesn't sound that impressive, but the app, you can just say, what's the weather like in um, Seattle? And then you can see it in the app. It actually will tell you, um, you know, you have to connect to another service to actually get the weather, but you're in your app, it will display or say the weather to you. Now, what does that remind you of? Like, what I just described, you can go ask for the weather. Can you think of some other things you are using already that's already doing what I described? Yes, Alexa and the Google Home, right? You ask Alexa, the weather, you know, the news, Google Home as well. But the, this example I described to you with these painful steps of, uh, you know, you can train, but at least you, you see under the hood, you're actually training that machine learning with a web interface. And in the end, you have an HTTP endpoint that you can work with. So it's much more flexible to the uh, scenario of your app. Okay. So I want to talk about some more uh, other examples. I just showed you how to use the Microsoft language understanding to create an endpoint for your story of, say, getting the weather, right? Well, Amazon Alexa is a voice service, and it's pretty powerful. How many of you have uh, Alexa at home? I have one at home. I do talk to my Alexa. So I have tried out building these new skills. The nice thing about Alexa is that Amazon actually provides you these templates to build skills. You know, earlier when I talk about the Microsoft Louis, I talk about intent, I talk about like entity, et cetera, right? When you go try to build an Alexa new skill the template, you will see some parallel there where you also have to, you know, put in your intent and your entity, et cetera. Basically, when we talk about intelligence, we want to create like intelligent machines, right? But under the hood, you're actually just trying to train the machines to perform particular action. I don't know if they can, today, the machines are still not as like intelligent as humans. Like we learn how to read and we can see and different things. They're more uh, like categorized to a particular action that you can perform. So I have included uh, here some links for you to try out the uh, Alexa voice service. And you can also try it out and see if you can build something for Android as well. I want to mention about Pepper the Robot. How many of you heard about Pepper the Robot? True. OK. Um, when I was growing up, I grew up watching Astro Boy. And how many of you heard about Astro Boy? <laughs> the robot from the Japanese anime. Anyway, so I grew up watching that, and I never dreamed that one day I would be programming a robot. So I did get the chance to work with Pepper the robot. And to program the robot, you use the SDK mostly in Python. And you can also use uh, the Android SDK as well, as of last year at the I.O. it's announced. So you just download the Android plugin and SDK, you create an Android project, and then you need to enable the robot project structure, and then you are ready to program the robots. Um, this, it, the intelligence itself is powered by the IBM Watson. So you can carry on some conversation with Pepper. You know, Pepper can hear you, uh, et cetera. So even though it does sound like it's easy to create um, an Android app already for Pepper, Without an actual robot, just relying on an emulator, it is kind of hard to work with a robot. But with the emulator, you can try out a few simple things, like making the robot making some sound like an elephant, et cetera. Uh, I've included some examples here for the Google AI experiments. If you have never heard of it, go ahead and try it out. The, these AI experiments are uh, basically really fun experiments with images and music and game and code. I think as you start making apps with intelligence, you check this out, will give you some inspiration on what kind of apps you want to make by incorporating these AI and machine learning services. 
So um, I talk about AI and machine learning and how to incorporate these services in your app. Well, before you put all these intelligence in your app, you really should think about whether or not your app really need that intelligence. Because as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, there's all these fancy capabilities, but you don't just include it because it's fun, uh, fun and uh, showing off the technology. You have to include it for, uh, because of a purpose. So as you evaluate these services, um, you also need to think about, does that service offer SDK for you to use? And how easy it is for you to use? Do they provide support? Or do they give you some free trial and then they make you pay a bunch of money? Or is it actually free? Because of all these services, when you use these machine learning services, most likely you will get some, a lot of times you work with images and a live stream of videos. So think about getting user permissions. This particular um, has something to do with Android. If you work with Android apps, think about the user permissions. And then another thing is to inform the user about uh, data privacy, because these machine learning services, if they take a picture of me, they can detect my age, my gender, uh, you know, some other things. They know exactly what I'm doing, where I am, et cetera. So it's a big uh, data privacy issue. So you need to be upfront about your user. If you collect a lot of images, where are these images going to be stored? So be mindful with your user's data. So um, what is next? I will say there's a paradigm shift in software development. Today, I think every single developer needs to know about, know about machine learning and uh, AI. You don't need to become a data scientist. You know, this is one of the reasons why I'm a student of the AI nano degree uh, of Udacity. It's not like I want to become a data scientist, but I feel as an app developer, it's very important for me to understand what's the difference between AI and the machine learning? How does a supervised machine learning work? You know, how does that image recognition or uh, uh, natural language processing works under the hood so that when you actually work with these data scientists, you can speak their language. Um, also, uh, today, I just read a blog from Andrew Nguyen saying that uh, AI is actually like electricity. It's going to transform every, has the impact on every single uh, industry, healthcare, finance, and you know, every single industry. So I encourage you to try out the machine learning APIs I included in my uh, talk. I didn't, I didn't include too much of like sample code, et cetera. I mostly included a lot of resources for you to try it out. I think even if you just try out, say, a REST API call, look at that JSON response coming back and parse that JSON and try to put it in your app, it will already teach you a little bit about what does that mean, you know, to do uh, uh, face detection, right? And try out the TensorFlow tutorials and collabs. TensorFlow.org has a lot of beginner tutorials teaching you about, uh, for example, the, e this is the simplest example of uh, a handwriting. How do you tell if this is a one or two or three, uh, the digits from one to nine? And then check out the AI experiments that will give you inspiration on what kind of apps you want to make with intelligence. And just study some basics and make apps with uh, intelligence. So thank you very much, everyone. I know there's just a couple of people here, but I really appreciate you coming here to hear my talk today. Um, after this slide, I also included a whole bunch of slides here uh, about some talks on machine learning from last year's I.O. and as well as if you actually want to learn about AI and the machine learning, how to go about doing so. Just my personal experience in the learning of this, I had to brush up on uh, linear algebra, calculus, uh, intro to statistics, and you know, uh, algorithm, et cetera, before I dive into learning about machine learning and AI. So sometimes it's okay to just play with some tutorials, but there's a lot of math involved, so it's good to brush up on those. 
Um, so that's it. Do you have any questions? Yes? Um, you have a slide a few slides back about um, things we should be thinking about. Yes. And uh, one of the ones, I think this is before this, yeah, this one. I'm wondering if you're running this code locally, like TensorFlow, do I also need to worry about battery life? Is that going to really drain my battery chip? Um, so far, I have not noticed a battery drain uh, using that, but of course, I'm only using it for uh, for a demo. I think uh, I, I'll point you to watch this video, uh, this talk, Mobile and Embedded TensorFlow. He did a very good job of actually embedding TensorFlow on the device itself and talking about how to reduce your APK size uh, I think he mentioned the battery as a bit there as well. Any other questions? No? Great. Thanks, everybody. And I'm going to unplug my. Thing.